Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to answer a question I got about personally owned tools and whether or not you should buy your own tools when you're going to work for a hospital. Because to be honest, usually you get tools from the hospital. But there's also the drawback is normally the tools that you get are going to be everybody's leftovers and you're going to be subjugated to whatever brand or type of tool they feel that you need, not necessarily what you feel you need. So let's take a look at some of the tools that I have privately owned here at this medical facility. So let's start at probably one of the most important tools that you can own. This is my privately owned laptop. And yes, I do have a computer. But my privately owned laptop is a very, very important tool because it has admin rights so that I can install drivers, software, and I can communicate with medical equipment. Whereas if I had a hospital imaged computer, I do not have admin rights and everything is locked down. That can be some pretty serious problems. This guy here is connected to the hospital guest Wi-Fi network and there's a lot of websites including manufacturer websites that are not whitelisted and I cannot access them through my hospital computer. So this is a very good asset plus with it being a laptop I can save data on it and I can transport that data to and from the field if I'm working on a device or let's say I'm doing inventory scanning or something. I do that with this guy. Very, very useful, privately owned tool. You guys have seen my video on the Milwaukee Packout system. Everything that's inside here, including the toolboxes, is all privately owned. And it is my customized toolkit. So that guy there follows me everywhere whenever I have a serious case. And I would have it no other way because there's no way in hell uh, the hospital would buy me any of that stuff that's in there. Privately owned. Now this is my privately owned tool cabinet or my roll away. Everything that's on or in this cart is privately owned. And you can see everything from my tap and die set here which I do use rather frequently all my bit sets my special tools and I've, I've got lots of tools in here you'll notice I've got a lot of Harbor Freight tools because it honestly doesn't really matter uh, screwdrivers brushes all sorts of stuff wrenches etc privately owned I asked for this toolbox uh, from the hospital and I was denied so I went out and bought it myself and when I leave this job, it's going to follow me. It's going to go with me. So, all privately owned tools. Now let's take a look over here at my workbench. Everything you see from here to down there, from the pan devices to the benchtop tool sets, the microscope, all of my hot air station, solder station, uh, power supply, that's all privately owned. Everything absolutely everything and I would have it no other way because in my opinion all of these items are absolutely necessities and actually a bunch of stuff in the drawers are going to be privately owned too so you're probably thinking why would I buy my own tools if the hospital is going to provide them for you well it's all about being the ultimate professional and having what you need when you need it and there being no excuses for being able to get the job done. You have what you need according to yourself. So I, I do have probably, I don't know, $3,000 worth of tools combined maybe, which is, you know, very small amount of tools if you consider it contrasted to a, let's say an auto mechanic, somebody that's got tens of thousands of dollars worth of tools when they get to this level and I got maybe three thousand dollars and a lot of my tools if you guys don't know I treat a lot of tools like they're disposable you know some things like uh, my microscope here and my impact driver and power tools 
you know, besides those, everything else is pretty much a consumable and it's going to get treated that way. We're going to do whatever we got to do to get the job done. And that's why I don't carry like Mac snap on or anything like that, because then I have this just urge to preserve the tool and I don't feel that that's the best case scenario. You know, if I got to use a flathead driver as a pry bar or something, I'm going to do it, especially if it's in a small, small space and I got to use a, one of my fine tip screwdrivers. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I have a lot of tools and they follow me when I go from job to job. But on the good side is I have the tools I need and my days of asking my job to provide me whatever I ask for. I mean, like I said, I use a lot of cheap tools, but if I say I want an impact set of torques and I also want a set of uh, L-shaped torques, I shouldn't have any complaints for my work and I can't say that. A lot of places I've asked them for just a metric and standard set of uh, Allens and I've been turned down. You know, here, here's an approved list of tools, select something from the list. The whole time I'm thinking, no. I mean, not every job is the same and not every technician is the same. Some people like working on certain things, some people work on other things. In surgical, we're going to deal a lot with metrics because a lot of our medical equipment comes from overseas. So you'll notice the growing trend is I have a lot of a lot of custom tools and I have a lot of metrics because we use a lot of specialty tools. But guys, I, I just wanted to give you a brief rundown of my personally owned tools and why I would go ahead and do that. And like I said, I have about I have between two and three thousand dollars invested in everything, and I don't really honestly consider it that much. Um, but anyway, uh, that's all I got for you guys this morning. Y'all have a very happy Friday, and uh, thanks for watching.